When your airline flight gets delayed or even cancelled due to extreme weather conditions, plans can get thrown into disarray, particularly for business passengers looking to attend meetings or speak at conferences. Time is precious. Weather can significantly affect aircraft operations as low cloud and the hammer may impede visibility around an airport. The impact of weather on flight operations at this time is our focus. A warm welcome to Vision This Week on Channels Television. I'm Bukola Joe Okitumbi, and our runway is open for this flight. Weather can significantly affect aircraft operations. Low cloud, fog and rain may impede visibility at or around an airport, while thunderstorms and lightning can cause serious disruption to flight schedules. Thunderstorms and the rapidly rising or falling air currents which usually accompany them can make air travel uncomfortable for passengers and difficult for pilots in control of aircraft. Here in Nigeria, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority usually advises pilots and airline operators to exercise caution during flight operations in hazardous weather conditions. For each uh, season that we get, we know what, um, what the effects of it are to our jobs or how it relates to our jobs. Uh, say for example, for Amatan season, we know we usually struggle with visibility because of the dust A's. It comes in a whole lot and we have to struggle with visibility. Visibility gets poor. So then we, uh, we, have, uh, we have to watch the trend to see if it gets better for our operations. And then also the airline as well to see if their schedule would run as it should or as planned. And if it doesn't, then you adjust your timing to that effect. So also for rainy season, we have times when we know, okay, uh, in the afternoon because of temperature the increase or rise, we know activities in the skies get more during these times and then you know what cautions to take when you have these rainy clouds or cumulonimbus clouds as we call it around your roots and uh, all of that. While bad weather has the ability to cause havoc, accurate weather reports help pilots to keep both craft and passengers safe. So say there's a rain cloud or a CB around you and you do not know what that is all about and you choose to fly through it, then it becomes a dangerous situation. But the CB on its own, hmm, it's just one of nature's uh, phenomena, so not really dangerous. But then, when it's just like respect, you have to respect nature, respect your environment, respect what machine you're flying, and respect yourself as a person, know your limits. Weather causes a major incidental accident as to an airline or an aircraft, it definitely would affect the airline at the end of the day. The weather situation at this time is also a factor in delays and diversions as sudden weather changes when the flight is already airborne could occur. But passengers say they are often not told an indictment on customer care. If it's as a result of weather, we won't have any choice. Weather particularly wind speed and direction, is generally the major factor to determine which runways to use at an airport, in which direction aircraft will take off and land, and which flight paths are used. Here are some tips about weather. A plane cannot land or take off if the visibility or wind is outside legal limits. A plane cannot make an approach to land if the weather is outside its operating limits. A plane cannot fly within 25 nautical miles of a thunderstorm. On the whole, weather is a natural phenomenon. It is the responsibility of the airlines to adjust to its whims. The Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, the industry's regulator, usually issues advisory secular to pilots and airline operators to be wary of weather changes and their adverse effects on flight operations. We catch up with the acting director general of the regulatory agency who explains why weather is a key factor in flight.
Well, uh, Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, as a regulator and uh, as a um, system that takes care of the safety of the f flying public, it's mandatory anytime there's Hamatan, you issue that warning. It's something like a formal thing. I look, you've been warned. If the visibility, what we you know, there's always what is called landing visibility. So if that visibility of that particular airport is below what we call landing minima, you're not supposed to go in and fly. If you do, you know, so anything can happen. You may run into an accident or most likely, even if you successfully land, will violate you for breaking that uh, low visibility. Even though right now I can tell you uh, what Nigeria is doing, especially uh, NAMA, Nigerian Airspace Management Agency, they're equipping all our airports right now with better landing equipment. Uh, we are having CAT 2, CAT 2 ILS approaches, which will, you can land at a lower, a much lower visibility than category 1. And just of, right now, as I speak, they're in, uh, putting in, installing another one, which is category 3 ILS. Category 3 ILS lowers the visibility much more. That you can, even if your aeroplane is equipped and you are trained to do CAT 3 approach, you can do auto approach all the way to touchdown, irrespective of the visibility. So you see, there's a lot of uh, improvement coming on to take care of uh, the Hamatan problem we're having. You do not depart from airport A to go to airport B until you have the weather report of airport B. Do you understand? So if the weather reported at airport B, which is your destination that you, you, you intend to go, if the weather reported is below the landing minimum, you don't take off at all. Do you understand? So this is what we do to ensure safety. And, uh, well, there are times, in fact, I doubt, you see, if a pilot takes off to an airport where the visibility is below landing minimum, he's going to be penalized because he's supposed to have all the, what we call, dispatch documents. Part of those dis dispatch documents is what is called notice to airmen, what kind of equipment is at the destination airport. He has what is called the uh, load sheet, that is the number of passengers, the weight of the aeroplane and everything, and plus the weather report. You understand? And weather report, destination weather report, and a route weather report. You must have those documents, sign them out before you take off. So that is you know, <laughs> what we do. Of course, you may have a good report of your destination airport. But then, on your way, the weather changes. You understand? So if the weather changes, you that naturally you must have an alternate. You know, if I'm coming from Abuja to Lagos, I'm supposed to have enough fuel to probably go back to Abuja or go to Paracot if Lagos is closed for any reason. You know, a lot of safety measures are put in flying. You know. So we do, we do all that to ensure safety. The Accident Investigation Bureau has been making a case for the existence of its command and control center in Lagos. The boss of the agency said the center is where investigators monitor flights real time to enable them track aircraft in case something happens, and this will help to preserve evidence in the case of an eventuality. Accident will not tell you I'm going to happen tomorrow, so be prepared. It can happen anytime. So there must be a command and control center where calls go through 24-7 is manned where you can call us, there's an accident here, or you send an email, or they, they have channels where they pick information from the website. We now monitor aeroplane activities from this room, same as control tower. 
So you don't need to sit and wait for somebody to notify. You will have first-hand information straight away. So that's what we use. Um, and in case there is an accident, we can actually control and manage everything that happens on this side from here. Because our investigators now has like a chip, like, like a phone, so we can actually track their locations anywhere they are in Nigeria we can track. And we'll know who is the closest investigator to that crash and we'll mobilize that person. An aviation expert has said there is need for the federal government to tackle the issue of aviation fuel pricing more seriously as this affects airline operations. This expert also believes that the airport slot system should be introduced for rail lines so that it can make profit maximally. So you can have an aircraft and then run all your money, all your revenue on fuel. I can tell you from experience, in Nigeria we are paying CNC, cash and carry. It's not done anywhere in the world. You pay for the flight, you are, for the next flight. No. You can, com you can confirm this from other sources. You need, that, that's what we call a card. Just show the card to the fueler. They will fuel your aircraft, and you pay 30 days after. That's how to run an airline. Every morning, when you get to Ikeja, on your mark, set, go. Seven, five, or four airlines going to Abuja at the same time it doesn't make sense. And you go with 30 passengers, you go with 40 passengers, it doesn't make sense. Why don't you have a slot allocation? 7 a.m., hour, 8 o'clock, arrow. Every hour on the hour, let's have a dedicated airline going to Abuja. By 2020 Easter, the reconstruction of the Akanu Ibiam International Airport runway will be completed. That's coming from the Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika. Mr. Sirika said this during an inspection visit to ascertain the level of work already done on the airport runway. According to him, apart from the runway, the installation of instrument landing system, taxi and airfield lightings will be delivered within the timeline. I am very satisfied by the level of work. According to the program of work approved and established uh, by us, we're beating the deadline. As to the question whether it would be or Easter is p feasible, indeed it is. Um, by our program of work, we would be delivering this runway, God willing, before Easter. And um, that is sacrosanct by the grace of God. This runway will come with um, other uh, equipment and other systems that would make the runway efficient and effective. The instrument landing system is uh, part of it. Uh, the airfield lightings, um, the taxi lights, and so on and so forth will all be part and parcel of what we deliver with this runway. For the air transport industry to move forward, improved customer relationship, promotion of safety and cost management should become the new thinking in the strategy for businesses. That's the view of the Director General of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, Mr. Babatunde Irukera. He added that global dynamics in the air transport value chain revolves around improved customer experience, saying investors not thinking along the line were likely to be left behind. A 25-kilometer drive from Bochi Metropolis will take you to the Sa Abubakar Tofa Abalewa International Airport, Bochi State. The airport is relatively small in size and takes pride in having one of the longest runways in Nigeria with a state-of-the-art facility. The apron has a width of 150 meters and 300 meters length capable of accommodating four Boeing aircrafts at a time. So we have a floor where the uh, aircraft land and um, uh, pass. That's, uh, we have the, an apron of uh, width of 150 meters, length of 300 meters, which is capable to accommodate uh, boys 747, at least four of them. Skid marks are visible on the runway, but it is still not yet a busy route for commercial airlines. Domestic flight schedules are three times a week 
and passengers' traffic has surged. Passengers on a local flight schedule go through security checks. Some of them appear to be comfortable with services at the airport. The services are fine. For a small airport, uh, check-in was quick, security was quick and professional. Um, actually, the toilets are clean and fine and there's somewhere to buy some snacks and drinks for a small airport. I actually think it's, it's okay, it's fine. The airport, if you will remember, has been functional for the past, uh, I think, three, four, five years, I think. Considerably, it is a new place, and uh, the facilities here, I think, are still in perfect condition. The utilities, the air conditioning, the washrooms, and uh, the checking in, and uh, the security uh, system, I think they are all working to my satisfaction. Managers proclaim that the airport is of international standard, but such operations happen once a year during Muslim pilgrimage to Mecca. Concerns have also been raised over adequate maintenance. The international operations so far, we only have our international operation during Hajj operation, only so far. But we are now preparing or we are praying that later we will be having international operations even within Africa. Let's start with it and see. You know, each and every equipment needs uh, uh, maintenance, services, and other things. So sometimes when the, when the equipment got problem, most of our equipment have been imported. We have been imported. Then the people that will attend to the maintenance are always uh, expatriates. So immediately when I inform the state government, they take action. But for them to come, it may take time. There are few suggestions authorities may want to welcome to improve quality of services. When I came in, I noticed that the baggage collection was still done manually. So I think if they can automate that, I think that would be great. With a conveyor belt, which is usually standard in most airports nowadays. So. That's my only suggestion. Perhaps a takeover from the federal government may enhance smooth operations and ease the burden on the state. Um, we've got all the ground staff up. Are you happy for us to close the door? Following a similar flight from New York to Sydney, Qantas Airlines has completed a near 20-hour non-stop research flight from London to Sydney in the face of its desire to order planes for what would be the world's longest ever commercial route to witness two sunrises. The chief executive officer of the airline shared his view on board the flight. So our intention is to have a, a bigger sea pitch in economy than we've ever done before, have dedicated stretching areas in economy. So it is a very uh, designed product for long haul travel like Sydney London and Sydney to New York. We're particularly designing the product for these ultra long haul sectors. Already on Perth London, in our economy, we have the highest satisfaction levels in economy of any route on our network. We're aiming to do that on the ultra long haul flights as well. And we think given the unique IP that we're developing, we absolutely can deliver on that. The London-Sydney research flight was operated by a Boeing 787 Dreamliner with 50 passengers on board. The plane also had fuel remaining for roughly about one hour 45 minutes of flight time. Six people in business class wore devices that would allow researchers to analyze food and beverage intake, sleep patterns, lighting, physical activity and in-flight entertainment to assess the impact on health and well-being. Pilots also wore electroencephalogram to monitor alertness and brainwave patterns. And what we've done basically um, with this team, multidisciplinary, 
across um, physical activity, exercise, nutrition, and chronobiology is to design three very important things on the flight. First, the lighting, then the meal schedule and the meal composition, and physical activity on board. And why are we doing that? This is to, on this very long flight, to help people to adjust better when they arrive in Sydney and to reduce jet lag on arrival. The flight is also historic because it comes almost 100 years to the day when the first London to Australia flight was operated. I actually feel fantastic. I feel really well. Probably a lot better than I normally would at this point in the flight, to be honest. I think, I was thinking about it, I think because there's only one time zone change, whereas ordinarily I'd have to get used to, albeit really short, a time zone change when I'm thinking about my transfer for the next flight. So I think that's helped. Um, so yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan so far. <laughs> to fully operate this ultra long all flight, the airline needs to get pilots to agree on contract terms and a sign off from Australia's aviation regulator to order planes this year to launch the flights by 2023. Captain Helen Trenary, who led the flight, said research data, including activity monitoring, sleep diaries, and monitoring of melatonin levels would help determine whether the crew mix of one captain, one first officer, and two second officers used on the flight was appropriate. So I think the research data now will go a long way towards uh, making the case for that uh, in how we manage our rest and our well-being and how we have days off afterwards and before a trip, and also what we do when we're in port as well. Qantas has been considering an order for either an ultra-long range version of Airbus S's A350-1000 or the Boeing company's plane. Although the latter's plane's entry into service has been delayed and so Boeing has put together an alternative offer to deal with that. If Qantas goes ahead, the route will be launched in 2023. This is where we call it a day on the program. See you next week. I'm Bukola Joe Okitumbi.